Do you ever wish you could change the color of objects or clothing inside of Lightroom? Well, it actually turns out you can. So inside this video, I'm gonna show you a really great trick you can use to edit your photos in Lightroom, change colors without having to head over into Photoshop. Let's do it. Hey guys, we're gonna get started together. First off, if you want to download this file and edit along with me, you can head to signatureedits.com slash free dash raw dash photos. We've got hundreds of raw files there that you can practice on. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, I got this photo here. I'm gonna start by just adding a basic preset so we have a little more pop on it. And then we're going to zoom in here and talk about options to change colors in Lightroom. Now, if you happen to luck out with a specific photo, we'll go over the easy one first. You can head down into your HSL panel, and let's say that this dress is yellow. Well, we can change it to slightly more red, slightly more green, but it's also affecting the background of the photo, and of course, it is only gonna allow us to make it slightly more red or slightly more green. Another way you can do it, you can head down to your calibration, and you can adjust the red primary, if it's the yellow color we're going for, or the green primary, and that's gonna give us a little bit more leeway over what we can do. However, obviously this is limited and kind of basic. It's not really gonna do what we want it to. So what do we do to select a specific object? Well, we're gonna head into our adjustment brushes. I'm gonna hit K on my keyboard. That's gonna pull up my new adjustment brush. And we can do this several different ways. We can go to create new mask, and we could try selecting people and select our person here. And then Lightroom is going to give us the ability to select different parts of this person. Okay, now this is actually going to work in a roundabout way to select the clothing. So first we're going to start by creating just a person mask. All right, we're going to call this, hold on, <laughs> we'll go create mask. We'll call this person mask. Now normally I don't actually name my layers because I find I just, it's one extra step you don't need to do, but you can if you want to. Now the next thing we're going to go do is hit this subtract button. And that should actually allow us to go in here and select everything about this person except for the clothing. So what we can do here, deselect entire person. And we're going to go with face, body, eyebrows, eyes, iris, lips, teeth, and hair. And now what we've done is we've actually created a subtraction mask, subtracting everything from our subject except for their clothing. Now this did a pretty good job, but you can see it still selected some of her hair and a little bit of this hat. And I don't want to change the color of the hat or the hair. I just want to change the color of the dress. So we're going to go in here and hit subtract one more time and just go with the brush. And now I'm going to zoom in on my photo and I'm going to brush away everything else that is left. Make sure auto mask is not selected. And I can just erase it off of her, off her hair, off this hat. So pretty easy. Now we're going to show you a different way that it can actually be a lot faster for certain photos in a second. But first I want to cover this one because you can actually turn this into a preset. So if you watch my last video, I covered the ability to actually use Lightroom's AI features to create AI presets, which will automatically do this. It'll automatically select the clothing. It'll automatically select just the hair, just the face and apply a preset edit to it. So I'm going in here, I'm fixing the edit. Now I'm going to show you how to change the color. I'm not going to worry too much about getting this exactly right. I could zoom in here and spend all the time I need to to get this mask absolutely perfect. Could continue here with my subtraction brush and just go auto mask and auto mask might do a good job of selecting the sleeve. Right. So you can be as picky about this as you need to be, depending on how drastic the color changes and how much it stands up from the background. You might have to be more careful or you might be able to get away with it if it's more subtle. So we're just going to go in here, pretend that I did an amazing job and continue with changing the color. So you might see down here in our actual brush settings that we can adjust and add a different color to our photo. But the problem is if we want it to be a completely different color from that existing yellow, you're going to see no matter how much blue I add to the shot, the dress still isn't blue. So how do I get that blue effect? Well, all I have to do is go here to the saturation and turn the layer saturation all the way off. Now that color that we're adding is actually going to shine through. You're going to notice it's not quite as strong as the dropper will show you but there's a way around that as well. So we can go in here. Let's say I want a really dark blue, like a navy, but super saturated. I can actually go in here, select this mask and go duplicate. Now all those settings are going to be duplicated. And of course we're adding that much more color. You can also play around with the temperature to add a little bit more depth to the photo. And what I have found is really helpful with clothing. If you take the contrast up a little bit and the shadows down, you get that extra richness, extra depth to the actual color. So you can just duplicate this mask as many times as you need to until the color is where you need it to be. 
So it's not perfect. This effect isn't going to be completely realistic on every single photo. You can see here with such a dramatic difference in our shade, we're definitely going to need to be very careful with making our mask nice and clean. Of course, if you're sharing it to Instagram and the photo is about this big on a phone, that's not gonna be an issue. People won't see it. So that's how you can change clothing that way. Now let me show you a really cool trick. You go in here to our mask. Now that we've got it done, the original one, not the copies. And we can actually save this as a preset. So if I reset this really quick, I'm just gonna show you. I've actually already created a preset here down here in my AI engine toolkit. You can see the link if you wanna skip this step and grab all these. Um, but I can simply go in here, go clothing texture, and Lightroom's gonna basically do exactly what I just showed you, but it's now saved as a preset. So if you wanna be able to do this yourself, and then you can just grab it, save a bunch of steps and just add the color, right? And you're off to go. Great, you might have to still, you can see this mask isn't perfect, but it'll save you a bunch of time. So what you can do, go back before we reset all those settings. I'm going to select this mask, just so I know which one it is. <laughs> I'm gonna go up here, if Lightroom would unfreeze for me. There we go. To presets, go create preset. And what's really cool is I can call this clothing color select, right? I can go to person mask, and we can add it to our preset. So I'll just add it, let's say, under the Light Leaks toolkit. Now make sure support amount slider is selected and the mask that you want copied is selected. And now you've got that as a preset in the future. You can grab that and adjust the clothing in your photo. So let's go to, say, this one right here. I can go to my new preset, which should be in the Light Leaks toolkit. Okay, perfect. Now it didn't do the most perfect of jobs. So I'd have to go in here and adjust it. You're gonna have mixed results with this, but this might also be because I kind of erased some of that mask. So if I were to get rid of some of these sub masks that I incorporated, it'd probably do a better job. Let's reset. Let's try the one that I made in the AI engine toolkit and we'll go clothing texture, okay. If we press O, we'll see the mask is done kind of the same sort of job. So it's not perfect on every single photo, but some photos you'll find it does a great job right away, saves you a ton of time. Let's try it on this one. Go with the clothing texture. And in this case, it hasn't actually seen the subject. So let me show you how you can do this if you don't wanna do that roundabout way. If you just wanna go in here and use Lightroom's object selection, sometimes that's the fastest, most accurate way, and it saves you a ton of time. So if you haven't used this before, hit K on your keyboard, that should pull up the adjustment brush, or go over here to the adjustment brush button, and then you can go make a new brush. So we're gonna go in here, select an object, and then we're gonna zoom in just a little bit. And you don't have to be super accurate with this, but I do find it's helpful if you're close. So we're gonna get kind of the gist of this dress outlined here. Of course, I shouldn't have selected her hand because now Lightroom will probably grab that in the mask, but okay, not bad. It's sort of <laughs> colored outside the lines a bit. I am gonna have to do our same trick here, go into subtract and we'll just go with brush and subtract her hair, doo, doo, doo. and with auto mask, hopefully it'll do a decent job of figuring out where the hair ends and the dress begins. But of course, we're not so lucky. So we're just gonna go in here. We can also, if you over, over erase and you wanna undo something, you could also select this mask, go add, brush, and then add it back in. So pretend that I did a great job here. I know, you've never seen a better mask. Same exact trick, right? We just go in here, take our saturation down, take the color up to whatever color we want to add. Let's make this a really deep red. So this is gonna be trickier. You do have to kind of play around. With the red, you have to think about what the luminosity is. And luminosity is just the brightness of the color. And so if it's too red, or sorry, if it's too bright, no matter how many times we duplicate this mask, is never going to be a deep enough red. Because if you actually look at a really dark, deep crimson red, it's not just saturated, it's also dark, the color itself. And so we have to darken this down or it's just not gonna feel right. So we're gonna darken it down. And sometimes it helps to play around, like maybe you lower the darkness of everything and you raise up the whites and it feels more natural. Or maybe that does the opposite of what you want. You just have to play. We're gonna delete one of these copies because I actually think we have too much saturation going on. Oh. Of course, it's helpful not to delete all of them. 
Let's start with just one and see. Okay, so we're getting close. We just don't have quite enough saturation. So now would be a great time. Maybe we'll try adjusting the tint, warming it up just slightly. Okay, that's a good base. Now I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to get rid of all of these adjustments by holding Alt on my keyboard, and we can just reset the entire panel. And I'm just going to add some more red, play around with the color, probably around there. Now the shadows are getting really, really clipped. They're too dark, so I'm going to take the blacks up a little, take the contrast down a little bit. And you can keep playing with it. Part of the reason this is going to feel really weird is I don't have a preset on here, and so the greens are just really uh, natural <laughs> straight out of camera. So maybe if I add a preset on here, it'll feel a little bit more... Let's go with like a moody preset. There we go. Of course, that's pretty intense, but let's dial it back a little bit. Okay, there you go. Our super moody, dramatic crimson red dress. Here's before and here's after. So if this tutorial was helpful, do me a favor. Can you leave me a comment below? How do you find this works for you? Is there any other creative ways that you can see using this technique? And hit that like button. I would love it if you would do that for me and let me know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future. If you want to see these adjustment brush presets, I will leave a link below if you just want to grab the whole toolkit. And um, yeah, other than that, I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome. Peace.